You know, I love podcasting. I have since 2006, back when you had to use like a Dixie cup with string to make the thing work. And that's why I'm so excited that we recently moved Mysterious Goings On to Anchor FM to record our podcast. I got to tell you, I don't regret it a bit. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. I'm not going to lie to you, when I first heard about Anchor, I was a little dubious because I've been doing it the hard way for so long. But I got to tell you, it's very easy. Use a Stripe account get sponsors, you're not paying monthly hosting fees, the sound quality is great, the distribution is phenomenal. Friends, download the free Anchor app today if you want to start your own podcast or go to anchor.fm to get started. Remember, you heard it here first on Mysterious Goings On. Welcome to Mysterious Goings On. I'm Alex Greenwood, your host, and I'm thrilled to have you back for yet another chapter in this long book of podcasts we're doing. Big thanks to those of you who are sticking with us, and especially a big thanks to those of you who have gone on iTunes and given us a starred review. Only takes a few seconds. While you're there, you can subscribe to the podcast and never miss an episode. They'll automatically download as they are posted. Keep that in mind. Big thanks to Jason McIntyre, who uh, made yet another appearance on the last chapter of the show. I always enjoy having Jason on. Well, this episode is not, or this chapter, excuse me. I'm breaking my own conceit here. It's not an episode, it's a chapter. I don't even know why I'm so hung up on that. But anyway, this chapter is a brief one, and it's a bit of a sad one. I'm recording this on Friday, April 22nd, and yesterday, and I don't use this word lightly, the genius Prince passed away. It's been a pretty rough year on losing geniuses, in my opinion. I consider David Bowie and Prince to be musical and artistic geniuses. We've also lost people who maybe genius isn't quite the word but they were still brilliant at what they did that meant a lot to me like Gary Shandling, Alan Rickman the actor you know we're just losing so many people and I understand that the world loses hundreds of thousands of people every day I believe that's right across the globe thousands of humans die every day it's because we are mortal finite creatures. We don't live forever. Nobody does. But I think there is a form of immortality besides our children. I don't, I think children and having children are of course a form of immortality because on a scientific level, you're passing your DNA down to another generation, but you're also passing down perhaps memories of you, which keep you alive. But artistically, we writers, I think a lot of us write because we don't want to shuffle off this mortal coil without leaving something behind that might be a way to discover insights into the humanity that was that writer long after they're gone. I mean, think about it. When I pick up a book by Gore Vidal, I can just hear his voice. Same with Charles Dickens. Not that I ever actually heard his voice, but I can hear his circumstance. And I think that's one reason why writers write and singers sing and write songs and actors act um you know um and i think when an artist whether they be a writer or a singer or an actor or a dancer what what have you a sculptor um when they resonate with someone the way 
David Bowie did for me and to a lesser degree the way Prince did for me and did for millions of other people it is something we take personally and I've I saw something on Facebook you know and there's people kind of going you know I'm paraphrasing but people are carrying on like they knew the man you know people are so upset people are crying well they didn't even know Prince or they didn't know Bowie personally but I saw something else that really summed it up for me, and I'm trying to get it right here. I'm doing this from memory, and it basically, and I'm paraphrasing it, but the person said in response to you know that previous comment, people mourn and grieve for artists they never met because through the work of that artist, people learned about themselves they met themselves through the work of that artist let that sink in a little bit I mean what about you does that does that fit for you I just know that when I heard David Bowie died I had to catch my breath when I I unfortunately and kind of thoughtlessly texted my wife when uh, about Prince and she's she'd seen Prince in concert several times and loved love love Prince the way I love Bowie and I kind of thoughtlessly texted her and said wow Prince and she's texted me back what and I'm like well he died and then she texted back I literally had to catch my breath and why you know that response is pure and honest and human and it comes from the fact that particularly popular musical artists I think that we grew up with or when we came of age were the soundtrack as you hear the soundtrack to my childhood or my teen years or high school it's true though you know there's a reason why nostalgia radio stations are very popular it's because people want to not only relive their glory days but they just don't want to forget the feeling they got from that artist in that moment of their lives so when we lose a prince or a Bowie or a Shandling or you know a Gorby doll or and you know uh, just just name any celebrity that really their death bummed you out when we lose someone like that I'm sure part of it is just what a shame we're losing that talented person we'll never see something new from them again that's part of it that's 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 a little selfish you're grieving for yourself because you'll no longer get more great music or what have you but you're I think the more honest emotion is what was said is that people are grieving because this artist introduced them or helped introduce these people to themselves. There are aspects of me that are things I picked up from musicians like Bowie, Prince, Sting, Neil Finn from Crowded House, Roger Waters from Pink Floyd, it's a long list, but it's a fairly short list of artists that I totally just worshipped and, you know, know every song and that kind of thing. But there's a long list of artists, of singers, actors, writers, that helped me figure out who I was because through discovering the things that I responded to, music by these people, for example, I discovered who I am. To you writers out there, if you have a, uh, a fan who reacts well to your work, I would suggest that besides the fact that you're entertaining them and helping them get through life, you know, with some enjoyable stories, you're probably also, to a degree, maybe not as deeply as Prince or David Bowie, but you're also, to a degree, perhaps helping them identify something within themselves something they perhaps couldn't put their finger on, or maybe it reinforces a belief system, or I don't know. I, a lot of this could be hooey, I guess. But I like to think that, again, the reason people react so viscerally to the death of someone they never met is because these people, these strangers, actually were friends. I'll tell you one more thing before I go on in this chapter. And 
I took it pretty hard when Leonard Nimoy died last year, Mr. Spock. And, you know, I know people who don't appreciate Star Trek or fall into the stereotypical, oh, there are a bunch of nerds who like that show and the acting isn't any good and blah, 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 the sets, blah, which is, by the way, bullshit because Star Trek is freaking brilliant. But anyway, I digress. But Nimoy um, represented something to me because he represented Spock, which was one third of the holy trinity of Trek, which is Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. Growing up, I watched, I mean, I was born right after the show got canceled, but I was of the first generation of fans to watch it in syndication. Even though I had siblings and I had an okay upbringing, I think there was a little bit of a loneliness to me. I, I know I was a loner for sure. And Kirk, Spock, and McCoy um, were like my friends. And, you know, I, I know that sounds a little laughable, but I'm wondering if there aren't folks listening who couldn't identify, if not with Star Trek, but with some other show or some music where you felt like these were reliable people, even though they didn't really exist, that you could escape to and with and have understanding with you know you could imbue these fictional characters with the attributes of things that you might have felt were missing in your own life so when Nimoy died who was a gentle soul and a great artist and and Spock he was Spock all all deference to Zachary Quinto he ain't Spock Never gonna be. Leonard Nimoy was Spock. And when he died, I just felt this ripping away, you know, like a part of my childhood, which is, you know, again, that visceral reaction. I can't say I felt it as acutely when DeForest Kelly, who played McCoy, passed away, but he died 20 years ago, and I was a younger man. Back then, I was never gonna die, you know, but here I am now in middle age, and I know full well I'm gonna die. And it's just kind of hard to see your friends go first. Even if they're in their 80s, you don't want to see it. Well, I guess I've probably meandered long enough on this meditation on loss, but I I just wanted to bring it up with you, and I'd love to hear what you think about your connection to artists that we lose, whether they be singers, actors, writers, dancers, sculptors, painters. I'd love for you to get in touch with me about it. Um, You can do that on Twitter at A underscore Greenwood, or you can go to pilotscross.com and go to the Clues blog, and I'll try to make sure I have a post up about this particular episode. And I'd love for you to comment about your feelings about losing Prince or Bowie or Gary Shandling or Alan Rickman or... Patty Duke, any of these wonderful artists we've already lost in 2016. You know, my good friend Brian said something. He said, I think this is the year that cool dies. Could very well be. 2016 um, is off to a pretty macabre start, and we're losing some fantastic artists. Anyway, I don't want to be a downer. I hope you um, can do what I'm doing, which is, if you haven't listened to Bowie's final album, Black Star... Um, or the one prior to that, which is called The Next Day, you owe it to yourself to listen. Bowie knew he was dying, and he crafted Black Star as a farewell message to his fans and the world, whereas Prince, unfortunately, we're learning, died unexpectedly, and you won't have any trouble finding his music uh, to listen to. So, again, I hope to hear from you. In the meantime, thanks so much for listening, and... Keep reading and listening. It's a great time to get a great deal on a new car when you get approved for an auto loan from PenFed. Our powered by true car rates are as low as 1.39% APR on new vehicles. Finance for a longer term to lower your monthly bill. Plus, take up to 60 days to schedule your first payment. Join PenFed and together we'll keep you moving forward. Anyone can apply. Visit PenFed.org slash auto or call 1-800-247-5626. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. It's a great time to get a great deal on a new car when you get approved for an auto loan from PenFed. 
Our Powered by True Car rates are as low as 1.39% APR on new vehicles. Finance for a longer term to lower your monthly bill. Plus, take up to 60 days to schedule your first payment. Join PenFed, and together, we'll keep you moving forward. Anyone can apply. Visit PenFed.org slash auto or call 1-800-247-5626. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA.